the, the radical activist types have this figment in their imagination of the patriarchal oppressor, whoever that happens to be. And that's really a figure of Satan in some sense, right? It's, it's more like the statist symbol of Satan. And then the issue is, who do you put that upon? They, and they test it. It's like, well, maybe it's you. Maybe it's you. Maybe it's you. It's like, well, my, my sense was, no, sorry. First of all, I'm not sure that exists the way that you think it does. And if it does, it's not me because that isn't, that isn't what I'm doing. So, and all of this in some sense has been a test about that. And I, I think that culminated in this interview with Kathy Newman, where she really, well, it was really, it was a kind of a miracle of interviews in some sense, because what the person she was interacting with bore so little resemblance to me that it was painfully obvious to the people that were watching the interview. And it really has to be obvious before that becomes obvious, right? Because often, I mean, if, if I'm watching two people talk and I don't know either of them, if one is confused about the other, how the hell am I going to know? Because I don't know. I can't tell. But in that interview, it was just, it was, she made, it's so strange. She made it obvious over and over and over. And I'm not exactly sure why. It's, I don't, I don't understand that because you'd think well, you that. you were speaking heresy. And yeah, but you think. her job was to, <clears throat> sure. a grand inquisitor. Well, she sure, was making but, sure that she but, had done her job to make you look at She, bad. she did. She, that's, that's it. But you'd think that. Look, when you when you do something so evidently that three million people notice, you know, like everyone sees it, you have to wonder why you didn't see it what when you were doing it. You know, you know what I mean? She's like, possessed by the crowd, by the spirit of the time. It's not her particularly. We're all possessed by group things. She's no different. But the, but it was so obvious. That's the thing. Is is often that subtle, and and it's all it's almost as if it's, it maybe it's almost as if when. When it becomes obvious like that, when it becomes made so obvious, maybe it's almost done with. Maybe. I doubt it, but you never know. But I mean, if, if she had just treated you as uh, this is a dignified perspective that we should really take into consideration, how would her bosses think about that? Well, we this think... is this <laughs> is the other thing we don't know. I like, I don't culture. I don't understand because I don't understand. I don't know Channel 4 that well. I don't know her journalistic background. I don't know her personal background. I don't know what she was up to in that interview. You know, um, when I first went in there, I sat for about three or four minutes with her before the camera started to roll, and she was quite personable, you know, like professional, and like like a news, uh, like a like an anchor person is. They're very professionalized, you know. They have a persona. They're all made up, and and they're they're they look better than they are. That's that's what a news anchor looks like. And but she was very polite and engaging, and we had a fine little conversation. But as soon as the cameras went on, it was like. She transformed into 20 miniature attack pit bulls and was just all over me, you know, and I thought, I noticed right away what was going on. And I thought, well, this is peculiar. What, what the hell is this? What, 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 what's driving this? And I thought, well, is this her journalistic style? Has she made her career this way? Is this what Channel 4 expects from their newscasters? Is this the state of modern British journalism? Is she just playing devil's advocate, which you have to be careful about because you can turn into the devil himself? Was she trying to score points on me? Was she doing, was she just trying to, was it a primate dominance game? Which I write about in 12 Rules for Life in, in chapter 9, which is called, uh, assume that the person that is, you're listening to knows something you don't. And, and one of the kind of conversations I describe in there is the primate dominance hierarchy conversation. Um, and then afterwards, when, when, when all this emerged, I thought, okay, how is she responding to this? It's like about 100,000 people have commented on the YouTube video. And almost all the comments are seriously negative. It's like, do you write that all off as trolls? Or do you... Because I know what would happen if I, if I did an interview and 3 million people watched it and 100,000 people told me that what I did was unex, inexcusable. I don't know if I'd ever recover from that. Like I would take that to heart, man. It would right. it would do me in. And so and so I don't understand how she how is she reacting to that? Is she just saying, "Oh, it's all like right-wing trolls," which it most certainly is is not. Well, um, she, she becomes kind of a martyr figure, right? Well, that's what that well, that was really interesting too because the the interview completed. I was very busy. I went off to the next interview, but I thought, "Oh, well that was shook my head that was interesting i thought they'd edit it down and just and just not give the accurate representation of what happened but right. they didn't yeah. which is also something really interesting they put the whole thing online it's like i was shocked at that and then everybody 
jumped on that. It was trending on YouTube like mad. And the was overwhelmingly critical of Kathy. And I thought, well, that's really interesting. And then two days later, The Guardian wrote a newspaper article and said that she was being victimized, right, by all this criticism. And they said, well, we had to bring in a security specialist and, you know, we got the police involved. And I thought, well, the way they wrote the article was, they didn't say, Kathy Newman is in danger, here's the proof. They said, Jordan Peterson is a horrible alt-right, you know, far-right, uh, you know, cult leader with hordes of minions who are attacking this Indian innocent journalist and there's been threats. It's like, oh, I see, the threats are just the excuse to you know, to continue this assault on my character and, and this ideological war. And then, so I thought that was really reprehensible. And I, I do believe it was. But then like 20 newspapers picked up that narrative. It was all, oh my God, Kathy Newman is like victim of the week. And that really shocked me because they that, that was such an inversion of, of the reality. And so I was really upset about that. I guess it was yesterday morning, the day before how that had been twisted. And then I I tweeted, I said, because I read the victim thing and I thought, yeah, well, probably not, but there's probably some idiots out there who are going farther than they should. So I tweeted and I said, look, you know, if you're saying, if you're threatening, back off, because we had a conversation. Like you might not like how it went and maybe I didn't either. It's not the point. You don't threaten her. That's too far. So back off. But there was a little part in the back of my mind that said, well, you know, maybe you shouldn't have said that because there was no credible evidence of threats. And then what happened was all these newspapers that were spinning it to making her into the victim. And it was like 15 UK newspapers did that and probably five Canadian newspapers. It was shocking. They used the fact that I tweeted in her defense as proof that she was being threatened. And I thought, oh my God, now here I've gone out and said, you know, like a reasonable person would say, back off hounds, like don't go too far. And then instead of, accepting that, let's say, gracefully, they just used it to spin the narrative. But then... <laughs> but see, they smell that as like a close to... Apology, I know, I know, right? I know. And say I, an uncle. I'm I know, I know. You, well, you say uncle. That's right. Well, that's it. That's it. And uh, one of the things I've learned in the last 15 months, and this is my advice to anybody who gets tangled up in this sort of thing, is like, first of all, be careful what you say. Like, don't, don't, don't be un incautious. But if you believe what you said, do not apologize because you're dead. You, you cannot apologize to a mob. You can apologize to a person. You cannot apologize to a mob. It's, it's an admission of guilt and a sign of weakness. And so, yeah, I would say I skirted apology there. And now I'm not sure it was a mistake because people also responded positively to the fact that I said, like, leave her alone, you know, but, but it was misused, which I found. And that's really something, eh? When, 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 when the situation is set up so that a a genuinely positive impulse and a genuinely positive act is punished, then you know that, that pathological things are happening. But then things flipped around again and a whole bunch of people wrote a counter narrative saying, look, you know, we sh that it's, it's reprehensible that Kathy Newman is being portrayed as a victim. That happened in The Atlantic yesterday. He wrote a big article about yeah, that. And that was that. number one on their, on their site. And now today, the, the Times in London so wrote an article. Changing. Well, yeah, it's, it's, it's so... I mean, I think that... Yeah, because the leftist narrative, the, the, the victim narrative, was all the people who are responding badly to Kathy are right-wing trolls who are vicious and misogynistic and who don't realize that the poor woman was just doing her job. And there's so many elements of mistruth, untruth in that. It's like, they're not all alt-right trolls. There's way too many of them. And most of the comments, although critical, are, are reasonable. Um, she wasn't a victim who was just, first of all, she's not a victim. She's a high paid news broadcaster and she has plenty of power. She's no damn victim. There's, and you know, it's not obvious that she's, um, what would you call it, an oppressed female victim of the patriarchy or like a major player in the patriarchy. I would put her in the latter category. So, and anyways, anyways, that, that was the narrative, but it online, that didn't fly at all, right? People were just saying, well, they were saying what I thought was obvious is like my sense when I watched the video and I felt this when I was in the studio. And I think this was part of my clinical expertise kicking in, I thought, she didn't say a damn thing in that entire interview that she actually believed to be true, except 
when she was rendered speechless for a second or two. And then one of my friends, because I said, she, she, she backtracked, and I said, ha, gotcha. And it was a sat satirical comment. Like, I wasn't trying to, you know, ram the knife home. I was, I was trying to play it light a bit, yeah. you know, and to say something funny. Fun, one yeah. of my friends, who's a very wise person, said, you know, you could have, instead of doing that, you could have taken that opportunity to say, okay, look, now, we finally agreed on something. You know what I mean, you know, that, that's why you were taken aback. You actually understand what I mean. Now we could have a real conversation, yeah. but... Hindsight's Well, you know, that would have been a different way of playing it. We were almost out of time at that point in the interview anyways, but, um, but I have wondered if... I mean, there's nothing wrong with humor. It's really, really useful, but maybe it would have been a better time to have offered a hand, you know. And then I, I contacted her through some channels and said, look, you know, here's how this should end. It shouldn't end with me winning because I don't regard this as a victory because the conversation didn't go well and that would have been a victory, right? And, and this isn't me against you and I win and you lose because I'm not interested in that. I don't think that's the right outcome. I said, what, what should happen now is that we had this, let's get together and have a real conversation, like see if we can get past the, the invective and ideological idiocy and devil's advocacy and primate dominance hierarchy maneuvering and all of that and have a conversation. And she wrote back and she said, well, I need to think about it for a few days, but I don't understand what all the fuss is about. I thought the interview went very well. And I thought, oh, it just sort of left me speechless. It's like, fair enough. You want to take a break from this. I understand that. It's got to be fairly intense. You know, although I also don't know my, is she happy about it? Is Channel 4 happy about the fact that you know, like three million people have watched it in, in three days? It's a hit. If you want, like, if you're if you're running a tabloid, you want views. That was good business. They, well, they got the views, mm -hmm. you know, and and maybe maybe only forty percent of them thinks thinks that way or something. But I have no idea what the underground motives are.